All right, good afternoon, everyone. I am uh, Councilman Rafael Salamanca, the chair of the Subcommittee on Planning, Dispositions, and Concessions. We'd like to welcome ev everyone to today's hearing. Uh, we are joined today by Council Members and Andy, uh, Andrew Cohen, uh, Council Member Mark Traeger, uh, Councilwoman uh, Mendez, Council Member Kalos, and Council Member Levin. Today we will hold hearings on five items. The first four items are applications for tax exemptions pursuant to private housing finance law. The fifth is an application for a mortgage loan pursuant to the private housing finance law. The first item on the calendar for hearing is LU 616 regarding a 40-year property tax exemption pursuant to Article 11 for property located at 911 through 917 Atlantic Avenue and 1041 through 1047 Fulton Street in Brooklyn. This tax exemption will facilitate the creation of 114 units of affordable housing in two buildings at a range of AMIs. These developments represent the off-site affordable housing generated by the agreement between Hudson Companies, Inc. and the New York City Economic Development Corporation in connection with the 2015 disposition and redevelopment of the Brooklyn Public Library in Brooklyn Heights. Although the site is in Council Member Combo's district, the Brooklyn Heights Library site also within Brooklyn Community Board 2 is located in Council Member Levin's district. I am now opening up the public hearing on LU 616. And uh, so, speak, Mr. Speaker, if you could introduce yourself. I'm, my name is Jordan Press. I'm Executive Director for Development and Planning in HPD's uh, Office of Government Affairs. Land use number 616 consists of an exemption area containing the new construction of two buildings that will be located at 1043 Fulton Street and 909 Atlantic Avenue in Brooklyn Council District 35. Known as the Brooklyn Public Library Offsite, this project is being developed under HPD's inclusionary housing program and generates inclusionary housing square footage to maximize the floor area ratio on its own site. Once completed, the project will provide 150 rental apartments with a mixture of units, including 55 studios, 32 one-bedrooms, 22 two-bedrooms, and five three-bedroom apartments, plus a superintendent's unit. Under an inclusionary agreement, 23 units will be restricted at 60% of AMI and 60 units will be restricted at 80% of AMI. Under a separate regulatory agreement, 31 units will be restricted at or below 125% of AMI. The sponsor will finance the project with private funds and all of the units will be permanently affordable. Today, HPD is before the subcommittee asking approval of the Article 11 tax benefit in order to facilitate the project and to maintain affordability of the residential units. Uh, my understanding is Council Member Cumbo has been briefed and has indicated her support for the project. All right, thank you. Um, Council Member Levin. Thank you very much, Chair Salamanca. I just want to thank HPD for um, uh, working to get this very important part of this uh, entire land use development package uh, moving quickly and expeditiously. Um, and so I, I support this, uh, this Article 11 tax exemption as well, being approved by uh, my colleagues here at the subcommittee. Um, this is the affordable housing um, that was part of the uh, Brooklyn Public Library uh, land use project that was in the 33rd district that we approved back in uh, December of, of uh, 2015. So, uh, for my colleague's reference. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Are there any uh, members of the committee that would like to speak? No? Are there any uh, more members of the public who wish to testify? All right, seeing none, I will close the public hearings on LU 616. The uh, second item is the Lower East Side People's Mutual Housing Association, LU 615. This application is a partial tax exemption to preserve existing rental housing for low-income families in 18 mo uh, multiple dwellings in the Lower East Side of Manhattan, containing 210 dwelling units. The units are currently occupied. Units which become vacant will be targeted to households at an AMI of 80% or below during the exemption period of 40 years, retroactive to July of 2015. These buildings are in the districts of Council Member Mendez and Council Member Chin. I am now opening up the public hearing on LU 615. Uh, Mr. Speaker. Land use number 615 consists of an exemption area that contains 18 buildings scattered throughout Council Districts 1 and 2 in Manhattan. 
These buildings were originally approved for disposition by the Board of Estimate in 1990 and the City Council in 1991 and 1992 as low-income rental housing, known as Lower East Side People's Mutual Housing Association. <coughs> the properties are located at 168 Attorney Street, 45 Clinton Street, 15 Clinton Street, 28 Clinton Street, 165 Suffolk Street, 17 Avenue D, 136 Avenue C, 218 East 7th Street, 327 East 8th Street, 169 Avenue B, 171 Avenue B, 173 Avenue B, 391 East 10th Street, 166 East 2nd Street, 523 East 6th Street, 295 East 10th Street, 539 East 11th Street, and 419 East 12th Street. The combined portfolio contains one studio, 46 one bedrooms, 104 two bedrooms, 53 bedrooms, and four four bedroom apartments plus five superintendent units for a total of 210 low income rental units with no vacancies. Um, in addition to the residential units, there are 11 commercial spaces. Targeted household income AMIs are below 80%, and rents range from $489 for a studio to $1,692 for a four bedroom unit. Currently, the owner is experiencing financial hardship as tax abatements and tax exemptions phase out. Therefore, HBD is seeking approval for Article 11 tax benefits retroactive to July 1, 2015, which will cover the period when the arrears began to accrue. The retroactive tax exemption will also cover the commercial space for a period of two years only, at which time the commercial will no longer receive tax benefits. Uh, in order to maintain continued affordability of the low-income units, the residential portion of the portfolio will receive a partial tax exemption that will expire 40 years from the effective date, coterminous with the term of the regulatory agreement. Council Members Chin and Mendez have been briefed and support the project. Uh, thank you, Mr. Press. I'm going to now hand it off to uh, Council Member Mendez. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Press. How are you today? Very well, thank you. So, um, just, I know there's a lot of rent-stabilized units in there. I don't know if they're all rent-stabilized. Could you just tell me that for the record? They are. All of them? Yes. Okay. Um, and the Article 11 will be retroactive. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, these are about evenly divided in Council Member Chin's district and in my district. Um, there, no. I, I heard a couple of... Clinton Streets and Suffolk Street, those are Council Member Chin's district. That's right, I got calls about the fire, which was in her district on Sunday. <laughs> so it happens all the time. It's a good thing we work well together. Anyway, we know this organization. It is um, essential they get these tax abatements so that they can continue to have the rent-stabilized apartment. Um, it is uh, much needed in my district, and I know some of the tenants there who are still having, even though these are affordable for my district, still having problems paying the, the rent in, those, in some of those units. Um, so I want to thank HPD for working with um, PMHA, as we call it in the Lower East Side, and um, getting this tax abatement through. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Uh, and just for the record, we received notification from Council Member Chin that she too is in favor of uh, this project. Are there any members in the committee? Uh, Council Member Cohen? Uh, thank you. Uh, just so uh, I'm, I, I have some questions and uh, I'm, uh, I'm definitely going to defer to my colleagues. But uh, is, is this a, uh, a, was this project built at the same time or is it a collection of buildings that are uh, one, one development or is it multiple buildings? M the m multiple buildings scattered across the Lower East Side. <coughs> and, and single end. It's uh, Gary Sloman. Uh, Gary Sloman, Director of Operations, Housing Supervision at HPD. It's a uh, a single entity. Multiple buildings, a single entity. And if, if the tenants are protected by rent stabilization, why do they need the tax? Wh wh what is? Why are we giving a tax abatement when we know the tenant is protected anyway? It's not a question of protecting the tenants. It's a question of keeping the rents at an affordable level. And the, the only the, way you can do that the, is the, to provide the rents are set by the rent stabilization. It doesn't matter. <laughs> well, the, the problem becomes uh, that eventually, the, because of the Lower East Side, and you know what's happened to real estate prices there, the rents are not sufficient to cover the taxes as the taxes go up. So the purpose of this exemption is to 
reduce the taxes initially and then to have a predictable increase in taxes over the life of the exemption so that the, the, the rents, which are controlled, uh, keeps, keep uh, even with the taxes. So it, it's a partial can abatement, in other words. That's way. correct. Uh, okay. Can I, I say really something? So I can't tell you you can say something, but I bet the chair could. Mr. Chair? <laughs> of course you can. Okay, I just want to elaborate a little bit. This is a not-for-profit um, housing organization, housing developer. Uh, they took a lot of these buildings during the 1970s that were empty and, um, and built them and made them affordable housing. Uh, because of rising real estate taxes and the loss of J-51 benefits, they've, their taxes have increased. And in fact, um, they have been unable in some buildings to pay their taxes, and we're gonna, we were going to lose those buildings as affordable housing. We were able to work out with HPD where there are another, in, in two instances, where another not-for-profit developer in my community was able to take over those buildings because the liens had been sold. So this is what we're trying to prevent here, you know, because otherwise they're not going to be able to pay the taxes. The buildings, the liens will be sold. A new owner will purchase the building, and then they will lose their rent-stabilized status. So that's the what we're trying to prevent going forward. So just wanted to put that on the record. All right, thank you. Uh, any more questions from the committee? Are, are there any members of the public who wish to testify? All right, seeing none, I will now close the public hearing on LU 615, and we're going to take a two-minute break.
All right, so we're back. So we're going to move forward on the third item on the calendar today is pre-considered LU's 163rd Street Improvement Council. This application is for a new 40-year tax exemption pursuant to Section 577 of the Private Housing Finance Law to facilitate the rehabilitation and preservation of four multifamily buildings totaling 73 units of affordable rental housing in Council Member Gibson's district in the Bronx. The prior tax exemption would be terminated and the new exemption would result in additional units being set aside for formerly homeless households with new rentals being restricted to no more than 80% of the AMI. I am now opening up the public hearings on LU's 638. Please introduce yourselves. Um, Artie Pearson, Director of Land Use from uh, Department of Housing Preservation and Development. And Jeremy Hoffman, Director of the Participation Loan Program. So we're doing the pre-considered item? Okay. Yes, pre-considered <laughs> item 638. This pre-considered item. I'm sorry. So it's pre-considered LU, uh, 163rd Street Improvement Council. Okay. This pre-considered item, it consists of an exemption area made up of four buildings located at 1088 Washington Avenue, 1102 Washington Avenue, 494 East 167th Street, and 382 East 168th Street in the Bronx, Council District 16, and is known as 163rd Street Bronx HDFC. The buildings were originally approved for disposition by the City Council in June 1999 and were developed under HPD's Special Initiatives Program. Under the Special Initiatives Program, 60% of the units were reserved for homeless families, and after the project reached its homeless requirement, the regulatory agreement re mandated that 50% of the units remain available for homeless families for 15 years. After the 15-year period, units can be rented in accordance with the project's income eligibility limits. As the restriction period has now expired, the buildings will undergo refinancing and rehabilitation through one of HPD's Year 15 preservation programs. There are four buildings in the portfolio and have a combination of 73 units with very few vacancies. There is a mixture of bedroom types, including one, two, and three bedroom units. The household incomes are below 80% of AMI, with rents ranging from $898 for a studio to $1,078 for a three-bedroom apartment. In addition to the residential units, the project has a combined total of six commercial spaces, of which one is occupied by a delicatessen. As previously mentioned, the project is undergoing refinancing in order to facilitate much needed rehabilitation to correct building conditions. The rehabilitation is designed to meet enterprise green community initiatives to maximize efficiencies. The work will include window and skylight replacements, new kitchen and bathroom fixtures, as well as upgrades and light fixtures. Additionally, new tile flooring in the common areas and new building entry doors will be installed. Furthermore, outstanding housing code violations will be addressed during the rehabilitation. No relocation will be required as the renovations can be done with tenants in place. In order to help maintain affordability of the residential units, HPD is before the council seeking approval of Article 11 tax benefits. And Council Member uh, Gibson has been briefed on the project and has indicated support for the project. So my colleague Jeremy and I are available to answer questions that you may have. Uh, thank you. Um, any questions from the committee? No? All right. Um, are there any uh, other members of the public who wish to testify? Uh, seeing none, I uh, now... Uh, close uh, the public hearing on pre-considered LU 163rd Street Improvement Council. Thank you. And so the fourth item for hearing today is LU 639, uh, 2865 Kingsbridge Terrace. This application is for a mortgage loan pursuant to Section 23 of the Private Housing Finance Law for properties located at Block 3256, Lots 156, and 75 in Council Member Cabrera's district in the Bronx. I am now opening up the public hearing on LU 639. Please introduce yourselves. Ar Artie Pearson, Director of Land Use from HPD, and I'm joined by Gary Sloman. Um, land Use number uh, 639 concerns a Bronx Mitchell Lama Cooperative known as Kingsbridge Arms, located at 2865 K Kingsbridge Terrace and 2801 Kingsbridge Terrace. The cooperative has a standalone garage for the benefit of the shareholders and is extremely poor condition and requires 
um, I'm sorry, and is a liability for the corporation. The garage requires rehabilitation, but HPD's typical loan repair authorizations do not cover this type of repair because the funds are non-residential, the funds are for their non-residential structure. However, Mitchell Lama Law, Private Housing Finance, Article 2, Section 23 does permit such a loan. Accordingly, the housing company has applied to HPD for a loan from HPD pursuant to Section 23, which authorizes rehabilitation loans to Mitchell Lama Housing Companies, provided such loans are approved by the local legislative body. Therefore, HPD is for the council seeking approval to grant a mortgage loan to Kingsbridge Arms, Inc. And Council Member Cabrera has indicated support for the project, and both Mr. Sloman and I are available to answer questions that you might have. Oh, thank you. Any members from the committee? All right, and just for the record, we were notified by Council Member Cabrera that he is in favor of this project. Thank you. All right, so we're just going to take, I'm sorry, yeah, are there any members of the public who wish to testify? Uh, seeing none, I will now close public hearing LU 639, uh, and we will take a quick break.
All right, we're back. Thank you very much. So uh, the final item on the calendar for uh, hearings LU638, a tax exemption for the lot legacy apartments. These are 21 multiple dwellings in the East Harlem and Upper East Side neighborhoods of Manhattan. The proposed 40-year tax exemption will facilitate the preservation of 359 units of affordable housing between 30% of AMI and 80% of AMI. Three of the buildings are in Councilmember Kalos's district, and he is in support of this application. Eighteen of these buildings are in Speaker Melissa Mark Verrito's district, and she is in support of this application. I am now opening up the public hearing on LU 638. Thank you. Land use number 638 consists of an exemption area comprised of 111 to 117 East 100th Street, 107 East 100th Street, 1325 Park Avenue, 177 to 179 East 101st Street, 178 East 101st Street, 1265 Park Avenue, 441 East 116th Street, 447 to 449 East 116th Street, 453 East 117th Street, 21 East 104th Street, 29 East 104th Street, 103 East 100th Street, 119 to 121 East 100th Street, 114 East 102nd Street, 116 East 102nd Street, 1553 and 1555 Lexington Avenue, 242 uh, and 332 East 106th Street, and 2051 Second Avenue in Manhattan Council Districts 5 and 8, and is now known as the Lot Legacy Apartments. In the early 1990s, the City Council approved the disposition of the buildings under various HPD rehabilitation programs. The initial tax credit compliance period for the buildings in the, in the project, which perceived, previously received credits, has ended and the project is undergoing a repositioning which includes refinancing for moderate rehabilitation under HPD's Year 15 Preservation Program. Lot Legacy is a portfolio of 21 buildings with a total of 359 units, including six superintendent apartments. Of the total number of units, 343 are occupied and 16 are currently vacant. There is a mixture of unit types throughout the portfolio, including studio and one to four bedroom units. The current income targets for the rental units are multi-tiered, including 30, 60, 80, uh, and 80 percent of AMI, with 20 percent of the 80 percent AMI units reserved as permanently affordable. In addition to the residential units, there are six commercial spaces, of, of which four are occupied. Rehabilitation of the properties include roof and window replacement, masonry repair, boiler replacement, kitchen and bathroom upgrades, painting, common area and flooring upgrades, as well as new mailboxes and elevator modernization. In addition, the work includes the installation of energy efficient lighting and solar panels in four of the buildings located at 111 to 117 East 100th Street, 119 to 121 East 100th Street, 29 East 104th Street, and 177 to 179 East 101st Street after an analysis was completed by Bright Power given their size, location, and sun exposure. In order to exist with maintaining affordability of the residential units, HBD is before the Council seeking approval of Article 11 tax benefits for a term of 40 years. Speaker Mark Viverito and I now understand Councilmember Kalis have been briefed and have indicated support for the project. I appreciate both of their supports. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you. I'm sorry. Can you just uh, state your name for the record? Yeah, uh, Jordan Press from thank HBD you. Government Affairs Unit. Thank you, Jordan. Um, any uh, questions from members of the committee? Councilmember Kalos? No? All right, thank you. Uh, are there any more members of the public who wish to testify? Uh, seeing none, I will now close the public hearing on LU 638. Today we will be voting on, uh, on, on the items we just heard, which have the support of the local council members. We will also be voting on three more items that have already been subject to public hearings. Those are LU 604, the uh, Concourse Village West tax exemption application in my district in the Bronx, and the Dream Yards NEP tax exemption application, LU 617 and 619, both in the Morrisania neighborhood in the Bronx. The Concourse Village West application seeking a tax exemption for a period of 40 years pursuant to private housing finance law will facilitate the development of three multifamily buildings totaling 265 units of affordable rental housing. 
The project will target AMI bands ranging from 30% of the AMI to 100% of the AMI. After significant negotiations, I am in support of this application. The Dream Yards NEP application seeks Article 11 tax exemptions for a period of 40 years to facilitate the preservation of six multifamily buildings. A total of 127 units of affor affordable rental housing on 168th Street and six multifamily buildings totaling 174 units of affordable rental housing on University Avenue will be preserved. These applications are in Councilmember Gibson's district and in Councilmember Cabrera's district, and they are in support of these applications. We will now move forward on to a vote to approve LU 615, LU 616, LU 638, uh, pre-considered LU's 163rd Street Improvement Council, LU 639, LU 604, LU 617, and LU 619. Council, please call the, the roll on a vote to approve. Chair Salamanca. Aye, no. Council Member Cohen. Aye. Council Maker, Member Traeger. Aye. The vote to approve the land use items is approved by a vote of three in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions, and referred to the full land use committee. Thank you. I would like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, council, and land use staff for attending today's hearing. This meeting is hereby adjourned.